paralysis can affect one part of the body it can affect our one half of the face we can have inability to move one half of one upper limb or arm or lower limb it need not be a complete paralysis what can happen is that you just you are not able to hold the objects properly you are not able to button your clothes you are not able to write properly while you are walking you can have this dragging of the leg or you have some imbalance while you are walking so any weakness in body can be termed as paralysis which is usually because of stroke most of the times the most common symptoms of paralytic attack are change of speech weakness of one half of the face or deviation of the face to one side inability to move one arm or leg inability to move means that you may not be able to move it at all you may be not you may not be able to grip the object properly you develop sudden difficulty while walking you develop sudden imbalance while walking along with that you can have sudden change of vision or sudden loss of vision or double vision so what we summarize it is as b fast b for balance e for i f for face a for arm and s for speech if anybody has any of these symptoms it is time to act that's why we have a acronym which is called as b fast along with that patient can have sudden severe headaches also patient can have severe feeling of vertigo inability to swallow and we have already mentioned change of speech and other things these are few of the most common symptoms which occur in patients with stroke or paralysis paralysis there are many two causes only one is stroke due to occlusion of the blood vessels or due to an impairment of the blood flow to a part of the brain which we call as ischemic stroke the second is hemorrhagic stroke which is due to rupture of a blood vessel to the brain which leads to accumulation of the blood in the brain or we can say it is due to in layman's term burst of a blood vessel which leads to accumulation of the blood in the brain these are the two most common causes of paralysis or stroke 80 to 85% of the patients are ischemic stroke or due to occlusion of the blood vessels 15 to 20% are due to hemorrhage or bleeding in the brain along with that there is a set of patients who have symptoms of paralysis or stroke but fortunately they recover spontaneously within a few minutes or hours this we can call as mini stroke or transient ischemic attack these strokes have recovered completely but they need not be ignored because they tell us that there are chances of such an episode occurring again these chances are very high and we don't know whether a repeat or episode will recover completely or not paralysis when we are talking about this paralysis it is basically diagnosed on the patient's clinical symptoms and neurological examination only however what is the cause of paralysis for that we'll have to do a ct scan or mri another paralysis which we commonly see is facial paralysis only which we call as bell's palsy this is usually presumed to be due to some viral infection and in this the patient will not have any change of speech they will not have any weakness of the upper limb or lower limb it will only be a deviation of face or asymmetry of the face to one side along with that the eye will not close properly saliva or liquid will come out from one part of the mouth again it is diagnosed based on the patient symptoms and examination it looks like a stroke or a brain attack but it's not a stroke and that is something which can be diagnosed easily by a good physician or by a good neurologist paralysis occurs and it is due to ischemic stroke or due to occlusion of the blood which is going to the brain then what we have to give is called as thrombolysis or clot bursting medication it goes at the site of the occlusion of the blood vessel and helps in restarting the flow to the brain 
The main thing is that we have to give it within three to four hours or as soon as possible. And for that, we have to recognize what sort of history the patient is having. Along with that, if the time has gone and the severity of the stroke is there, which is quite severe, the patient is stressed, it can be an ICU, it can be a normal ward. However, if it is, the patient is stable, he, we have to evaluate why this paralysis has occurred. Whether it has occurred due to something related with the heart, whether it has occurred due to something which is causing any difficulty in blood to the flow of the blood to the brain, whether the patient is having blood pressure or not, whether the, the patient is having diabetes or not, and accordingly we have to give medications. Most of the patients will require a blood thinner and a cholesterol lowering medication for a significant period of time, along with long-term lifestyle modifications also. The most important thing is you recognize the symptoms of paralytic attack or stroke. They have occurred within the last few minutes or an hour. Don't wait. Go to your hospital, a hospital where neurologists are available, a good hospital where CT scan MRI is available, and a right treatment can be started. If you think that we have to arrange for something, we just keep on waiting for the things to improve, it will be very harmful for the patient. It will not lead to any recovery and it will do major damage to the patient. The most important thing is if it is acute paralysis which has occurred in the last few minutes, hours, go to a nearby hospital so the right treatment can be started. A CT scan or MRI can be done and the patient can be on the path to recovery. Paralysis can lead to of course, if the patient does not recover and the treatment has not been started on the right time, they will not be able to carry out with all their activities. They may require help even for wearing clothes, eating food. The patient can become bedridden. A bedridden patient can have a number of infections. They can be chest infections. They can be bad so They can be urinary tract infections. They can lose their ability to speak properly. They can lose their ability to read and write. They can, uh, if the stroke is severe, like in a hemorrhagic stroke, they can need surgeries and even death can occur in up to 2% of the patients who have a major paralytic attack. There are two aspects to it. One is the acute treatment, about which we have already talked in brief. But what to do so that we don't have paralysis is also very important. Primary prevention, prevention of paralysis. So what we have to understand is that one in five people are at risk of paralysis or stroke. There are a number of factors which can be modified. There are a number of factors which cannot be modified. We can't change our sex, age, and genetics, but we can definitely change our lifestyle. A few things which are important, I'll enumerate them one by one. First, regular exercise. At least 30 to 40 minutes of brisk exercise which can be aerobics, which can be a gym, which can be morning run, Zumba is very important. In long term, it will definitely help. Second, strict blood pressure control. If a person has blood pressure, he has to take medicines on a very regular basis and remain in a normal BP range. Third, lipids or cholesterol. Management of cholesterol is very important. Any high cholesterol levels will be harmful. They can lead to stroke they can lead to heart attacks. If medications are prescribed by your doctors, you have to take medications. You have to take low fat diet, avoid all those fast foods and avoid all sweets, which are very rich in ghee. Fourth, smoking. Smoking is one of the biggest factors which is easily prevented, but we don't understand it. Smoking is not harmful only for the brain. It is harmful for each and every organ of the body. So smoking is an absolute no-no. Even air pollution is coming up as a risk factor for a stroke and many other disorders. We should do our best to reduce pollution. Of course, using air filters sounds very easy, but it's not a solution. We should make our efforts for us and for our future generations to answer the problem of pollution.